J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Overnight from Thin Ice. <laughs> The right dinner can make a success of almost any day, and the right dessert can make a success of any dinner. And I believe the right dessert is Jell-O, for everybody likes Jell-O. It's so attractive, so tempting, so downright delicious. No other gelatin dessert brings you Jell-O's extra rich fruit flavor. No other can top it for bright, luscious colors and rich, satisfying fruit goodness. And you can serve Jell-O in so many different ways. Serve it plain, a glowing mold of colorful Jell-O decorated with fluffy whipped cream. Or use one of the attractive recipes which are on every Jell-O package. They're all easy to make and inexpensive, and you'll like them. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O, for there is only one Jell-O. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Overnight from Thin Ice, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a rag, a bone, and a hank of gray hair, Jack Benny. Well, hello again. This is Jack Benny, the Silver Fox, talking. <laughs> and, Don, that was a nice literary introduction you gave me. I didn't know you were so familiar with Shakespeare. Why, Shakespeare didn't write that, uh... Jack, you know, a oh, rag, Jack's a bone. The name, Don. Yeah, Jack, is that the name? Well, I was thinking, well, anyway, Shakespeare didn't write it, Jack. You know, a rag, a bone, and a hank of hair was written by Rudyard Kipling. Oh, did Tippy whip that one up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but adding the word gray was my own idea. Well, ain't you the one. Mm. But I didn't mind that, Don. I'm quite proud of my gray hair. Besides, it's not due to age. I'm just uh, prematurely gray. Oh, prematurely. Yes, up to the age of 19, my hair was as black as the ace of spades. Well, what happened? Mother Nature trumped it. <laughs> the last time I'll play cards with her. Oh, don't worry about it, Jack. Personally, I like your gray hair. Oh, do you, Phil? Yes, it matches your complexion. <laughs> so it does, eh? Anyway, you should talk about someone else's hair with those curly locks you've got. What's the matter with them? You look like a big, fat Shirley Temple. <laughs> Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, you look like George Arliss 20 years from now. Is that so? Well, I don't mind looking like George Arliss. He's one of our greatest actors. That's where the resemblance ends. <laughs> Get a load of Phil's hair, folks, so wavy seagulls follow him down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yours is so dead buzzards follow you. <laughs> Hmm, that's fine talk. Boys, boys, now what's going on here? Nothing, Don. We're just giving each other the bird. <laughs> wow, that was a hot one. <laughs> the audience will cool it off. Not tonight, Phil. I'm a little too fast for you. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Did I miss anything? Oh, nothing much. Don started kidding me about my gray hair, and then Phil picked it up. Who's got it now? <laughs> Mary, I'm talking about my own hair. Oh, those. Yes. <laughs> yes, those. I've still got plenty of hair left. Yeah, stick a palm tree on your head and you'll have an oasis. <laughs> well, that's silly. Imagine a palm tree on my head. You could have monkeys for dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, that was a good one. Thanks, Phil. Yes, you two are so clever. Why don't you get your own program? Oh, Jack, we wouldn't leave you. No, no you're too good a stooge. <laughs> well, I'm glad you appreciate my humble efforts Oh, Jack, look, here comes our wandering boy Hello, Kenny Hello, Kenny Hello Well, uh, Kenny, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, I'm just burnt up, that's all About what? Oh, I had another fight with my girl That's all we do lately, fight, fight, fight 
Well, don't take it to heart, Kenny. Those are just lover's quarrels. That's all what happened. Oh, she invites me over to her house all the time, and after I get there, all she does is make fudge for me. Fudge? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? She won't put nuts in it. <laughs> Now, isn't that awful? I don't see how you put up with it. Oh, and that's not all. Every night when I ask her to go to the movies, she wants to play post office instead. Boy, is she dumb. <laughs> dumb? What's dumb about playing post office? It isn't even open at night. <laughs> Why, Kenny, post office is a kissing game. Haven't you ever played it? No. How does it go? It's very simple. They call out your name and the name of a girl. And then you go out in the next room and you kiss her. Then what do you do? <laughs> That's all there is, Kenny. That's the game. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. But it's not silly. Everybody has played post office. Sure, it's lots of fun. Well, I've played it a million times. Of course. Did you ever play it, Phil? Yes. <laughs> oh, then come on, Mary. Show Kenny how it goes. Now, look, Kenny. Mary's supposed to be in another room, and I'm the postman. So I send you to Mary to get the letter. Isn't that the way it starts, Phil? I never bother with the preliminaries. <laughs> oh. Now, come on, Kenny. Put your arms... Put your arms around Mary. Like this? Now, get your elbow out of my ear. Come on, Kenny. Put your arms around her. Oh, I'll bet this is a trap. <laughs> it is not. Go ahead, now. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Then why are you trembling? Say, hey, everything helps. <laughs> That's right. Now... Now, kiss him, Mary. What? Kiss him. Go ahead, kiss Kenny. Oh, you play with him, Jack. <laughs> oh, well, let's forget the whole thing. Kenny will never learn the game. Well, let him wait till the post office opens. Yeah. Hiya, Buck. How about letting me in on this? Oh, hello, Andy. Hello. <laughs> Why, Andy, I didn't hear you walk in. You were so quiet. Doggone it, I forgot my shoes. Oh. What's going on here, anyway? Oh, we're just showing Kenny how to play post office. Do you want to play? Uh, hold my coat, Buck. Who's the victim? Well. Good night, Jack. <laughs> now, come back here, Mary. Say, Buck, I listened to your program last week. Are you on the level about wanting to get rid of your old Maxwell? Yes, I am, Andy. Would you like to buy my car? Well, that all depends. Depends on what? Whether he's crazy or not. Now, quiet, Mary. We're talking business. Say, Buck, what do you want? What do you want for your car? Well, Andy, I started out asking $95, but I'll probably end up with $80. I don't think you'll even finish in the money. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Andy, are you interested in my car or not? Well, Pa and Ma were discussing it last night, and Pa thought I ought to buy it. He did? Yeah, but Ma changed his mind with a right cross to the chin. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry your paw got in wrong on account of my car. Uh, don't worry about him. When he comes to, he'll run her bow-legged. <laughs> well, look, Andy, let you and I go over here in the corner, and I'll make you a nice proposition on that Maxwell. Okay, Buck. Sing, Kenny. Now, look here, Andy. Despite all rumors, my car's in excellent condition. Why, that Maxwell is good to the last drop. And another thing. <laughs> I'm thrilled, aren't you? Just look what love can do. That ought to be Times Square. But it's a garden fair. How strange, how sweet to see a crowded street change to a paradise.
by Kenny Baker, as fine a tenor as these old ears have ever heard and these old eyes have ever seen. Very well done, my lad. Yowza, yowza. Gee, that sounds just like Ben Burney. Ben Burney? Yes, why don't you be original? I wasn't imitating Burney. I've always said yowza. Even when I was a little baby, I used to say yowza. <laughs> That's funny. When I was a baby, I used to say dada. Well, that was popular, too, yes. Huh? <laughs> you know, Jack, when I was a baby, I used to say glub glub. Well, Don, some... <laughs> Don, so some babies used to say Dada and some Glub Glub. I was the Goo Goo type. <laughs> well, that shows you there are all kinds of them. Uh, what kind of a baby were you, Phil? Bottle. Oh. <laughs> well, put it away while we're broadcasting. Say, <laughs> Buck. You know, yes, Andy? You may not believe this, but when I was a baby, I was the prettiest thing you ever saw. Yes? Yeah. Cute as the devil. I'll bet you were, Sad. I had blue eyes and blonde curls and dimples all over my face. Dimples all over your face? Yeah, I looked like a golf ball. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yes, sir. Ma used to put me to sleep with a niblick. <laughs> well, Andy, didn't your paw object? He was caddying. Quiet. Well, Andy, you're still cute. You really are. I might even add that you're handsome. <laughs> oh, you just said that to make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> and it sure got results. <laughs> well, we can't stay cute forever. We all get older, you know. Time marches on. Must have stepped on Andy. Mary. <laughs> Say, Buck, I got a picture of me here taken when I was six months old. Want to see it? Sure, I'd love to. Hey, here you are. Oh, isn't that adorable? Let me see it, Jack. Yeah, me too. Say, that's really something. Six months old, gee. But you know, Andy, I don't seem to recognize you in this picture. Well, I'll tell you, Buck, they never could get me to face the camera. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> you can't tell me from Robert Taylor there. <laughs> Hey, that's right, Andy. Say, Mary, isn't this a cute picture? Yeah, but his ears are awfully big for a baby. I noticed that, too. They are at that. Gee, Andy, did you really have such big ears? <laughs> yeah, they had to lock me up during the rabbit season. <laughs> well, here's your picture back, Andy, and don't you ever lose it. I won't. You know, fellas, all this talk about babies kind of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? It's the mystery of life. We're born, we cry, we grow up, we mature... And yet, what are we? I'm a Republican. <laughs> Kenny. I don't know, fellas. It's a, it's a problem, isn't it? We start from the cradle, just babies. And then it seems like, I don't know, it seems like overnight we're transformed into full-grown beings. And yet, do we really change? Do we really blossom? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no use trying to be a philosopher around here. You know, Jack, I hardly agree with you in your philosophy. You're absolutely right. Thanks, Don. We don't really change. When we're babies, our mothers feed us jello, and we love it. How true, Don. How true. <laughs> and then we're children in school, and those six delicious flavors are just as tempting to us. Yeah, man. <laughs> Phil. And then as time passes on, as the years go drifting by, we become men. Hooray! Kenny, stop showing off. You always bounce in at the wrong time. Well, I want to be a man. Write a letter to Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm sorry they butted in, Don. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Oh, just oodles, but I'll save it for later. That's fine. We'll all be waiting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting, Phil Harris and his orchestra will play Who from Sonny. Hit it, Phil. Now, wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Would you like to see my baby picture? No, I wouldn't. Then I won't have one taken. Goodbye. <laughs> You know, fellas, I'll bet eight dollars he's nuts. Play it.
called Who from Sonny played <laughs> 30 some new tunes, Phil played by Phil Harris and his orchestra and now, ladies and gentlemen as this is the climax of the football season and it being such a popular sport tonight we are going to present a little drama of the gridiron entitled The Big Game or Button Button Who's Got the Ball owing to the shortage of actors I will play a double role that of the coach also the star quarterback Flash Benny. Did <laughs> you hear that, Mary? I'm playing two parts. Yes, Ham. <laughs> now, Kenny Baker will... I'm ignoring that, Mary. Thanks. Uh, Kenny Baker will be right in, Phil Harris will be halfback, Andy Devine will be fullback, and Don Wilson will be the rest of the team. <laughs> and remember, Don, football will not be made of jello. Then don't expect me to carry it. Hmm. Fine college spirit. Are we all set, fellas? Well, wait a minute. What am I going to be? Well, Mary, we're short of men, so you'll have to be one of the players. Okay, just call me Butch. <laughs> remember, Mary, you got to get out there and fight. Don't worry, I'll slug them. That's fine. What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> now, don't overdo it. Now, folks, the scene of our play is Flatfoot College, located... <laughs> Flatfoot College, located in the thriving little town of Arch Supporter, Nebraska. Now, as the scene opens, the first half has just ended in the big game with Meatball Tech. The coach is giving his team a pep talk in the locker room. Curtain. Music. Now, now listen, men. The score is nothing to nothing. You're playing like a lot of jellyfish. Now, this half, you'll have to get out there and fight. Fight for dear old Flatfoot. Are we going to let Meatball beat us? Are we going to let him cross our goal line? Are we going to let him win? We always do. <laughs> well, this time it's going to be different. Now listen, men. We're up against a tough outfit. Keep your eyes open this half. Meatball's got something up their sleeve. I bet it's spaghetti. <laughs> Quiet, Butch. <laughs> Now get this, all of you. We're going out there and we're going to win. I want all of you to be up on your toes and stay there. We're going to look awful silly. <laughs> and you, Harris, you're the most conspicuous player on the field. What's the idea of wearing a steel helmet? I ain't going to get my hair mussed. <laughs> Fine cooperation. Why can't you be like Divine here? He was in there slugging and biting every minute. Why, he's the most alert man on the team. Yeah, who are we playing? That's the stuff. <laughs> and you, Baker, listen to me. You're a disgrace to the good name of Flatfoot. You're out there playing, you don't even know the signals. I do, too. What are they? Red means stop and green means go. <laughs> now, why don't you remember that when you're out in the field? <laughs> and you, Livingston, step out here. Yes, Coach. <laughs> Coach, I'm the couch. I mean, coach. <laughs> now, get this, Livingston. You're supposed to be playing football all during the first quarter. You were up in the grandstand. What were you doing there? I had a date with a raccoon coat. Was there a man in it? I hope so. We're going out tonight. It's a fine team. What a bunch of nitwits. I resent that. Look who's resenting. Look. <laughs> but it's true, there isn't a football player among you. Now, wait a minute, coach. You're balling us out. What about Benny? He's the worst quarterback we've ever had. I'm getting to him. Come here, Benny. What happened to you? Were you asleep out there? 
I did the best I could, sir. You did the best you could. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you're the laziest, dopiest player on the team. You ought to know. What? <laughs> Why, you're the worst guy. I'm sorry you're me. <laughs> now get out there, boys, and fight. We can't lose unless Meatball keeps on cheating. Cheating? cheating? Yes, they have 11 men on their team. But, Coach, every football team has 11 men. They have? <laughs> Darn it, I was thinking of baseball. Now get out there in the field, boys, and you, Benny, snap into it. I'll try, sir. Now let's go out and win. Come on. Hey, coach, what's that in your hair? The alumni, they're always there. <laughs> let's go, boys. Here we are, folks. The second half is about to begin. Meatball is already on the field. Here comes the Flatfoot team, folks, led by Flash Benny. Listen to their cheering section. Yay, Flatfoot! Rickety racks, coax, coax, knock the jaws and break their backs. Ray! And now, the meatball cheering section. Yay, meatball! Tear their helmets, tear their socks, send them home in a wooden box. Ray! Ah, folks, what a fine display of sportsmanship. The last half is about to start. The crowd is getting restless. There's the whistle. They're lining up. Meatball is about to kick off the flatfoot. Flatfoot receiving in V formation. And there's the kick. There goes the ball. Up, 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 up. It won't come down, folks. They're going to kick over again. They're lining up. And there's the kick. Oh, it's a beauty. There it goes. Kenny Baker of Flatfoot receives the ball, which immediately throws Kenny for a 10-yard loss. He's badly shaken. Hooray! They're in a huddle. Let's hear what they're saying. Take it away, Field. Now listen, fellas. We're on our own two-yard line. But don't get nervous. Yeah, what do we got to lose? Two yards. <laughs> Never mind, we got to make a game. I know. We'll try our secret pyramid formation play. You remember how it goes, Harris? No, hum a little of it. <laughs> Now look, Harris, look at here. You get up on Baker's shoulder and I'll throw the ball to you. So when they rush in, the ball will be out of reach. You get it, Baker? Yeah, I'll be killed. <laughs> now wait a minute, hold everything. What's this guy doing in our huddle? He looks like a spy for meatball. I'm Don Wilson, your own center. Right guard, left guard, and right tackle. Oh, where's my other tackle? Gone fishing. <laughs> what, without us worms? <laughs> now come on, fellas, let's line up. I'll call signal. I want to call signal. Oh, no. All you did last half was yell out your telephone number. <laughs> we want to get results. So do I. <laughs> hey, Flash, what do you want me to do? Run out and get me a hot dog. Get me one, too. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. What are you stalling for? Yeah, yeah, come, yeah, on. Come, on. Yeah, come on. Quiet, meatballs. Don't get saucy. <laughs> now, let's get going. Line up, fellas. Ready? Signals? 72, 23, hike! <laughs> there it is, folks, the famous pyramid formation play. Can't tell what happened yet. It was a loss. The ball's on the half-yard line. Baker is unconscious. And Harris, where's Harris? Oh, there he is, hanging on the goalpost. <laughs> They're trying to revive Baker. Take it away, Field. <laughs> Gee, this is awful. Poor Kenny, I wonder if he'll come, too. If I do, it'll be the first time. <laughs> Now listen, fellas, let's try our famous hidden ball play. Lay off of that one, Flash. Yeah, last time we tried it, we couldn't find the ball for a month. That's right. Here's your hot dog. Oh, give me a bite. Here, Piggy. Hey, Andy, run out and get me one. Oh, gee, I want to play. Now, come on, fellas, we only got 99 yards to go. Gosh, are we go going someplace? Quiet, Baker. Now look, fellas, they keep pushing us back time after time. I know what we'll do. I'll carry the ball myself. Here we go again. Oh, yeah? Line up there. I'll show you. Attaboy, Flash. Attaboy. Come on, now. Signal. 11, 22, 14. Bingo. <laughs> Nothing no, hype. Hit him, fellas. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's the play, folks. The ball is snapped to Benny, and Kenny Baker is immediately knocked out. They got Benny. No, he twists and turns and crashes right through Meatball. There he goes down the field, folks. Wait. Benny is tackled. No, Benny's pants are tackled. <laughs> Benny is free. He's wearing pink underwear, folks. I am not. <laughs> He's a cinch for a touchdown. Wow, look at him run. 15 yards, 
20 yards, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. <laughs> hey, you, pull over to the sidelines. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> But officer, I'm on my way to a touchdown. Yeah, that's what they all say. Let's see your player's license. But gee, officer, I was only going 70. Well, the limit here is 35. And why didn't you stick out your hand when you passed that left end? Well, how do you think I knocked him down? Oh, a wise guy, eh? Yeah. Come on with me. I'm going to make this touchdown first. Oh, no, you're not. I'm not, eh? Then take this. What a fight, folks, what a fight. Benny Dings with a right to the jaw. The cop counters with a stiff uppercut, which catches Benny off guard. What a suck. Benny is wobbly. He's down. He's trying to get up, but he can't make it. The count is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's out. Meatball wins ten to nothing. <laughs> Just a moment, folks. We'll bring the contestants to the microphone. The winner, Officer Murphy. It was a great fight, but the best man won. And now the loser, Flash Benny. I was robbed. <laughs> Put on the soup, Ma. I'll be right home. Here's a grand dessert for this time of year, and it's easy to prepare. It's called Orange Marshmallow Mold, and it will bring a cheerful dash of sunshine to your December menus. It's a rich and delicious combination of bright orange jello, ripe oranges, and creamy marshmallows. And here's the way you make it. Dissolve one package of orange jello, chill until slightly thickened, then fold in two diced oranges and eight marshmallows cut in quarters. Chill until firm, turn out on a platter, and you have one of the most attractive desserts you ever served. Orange Marshmallow Mold. So try this swell dessert tomorrow, but be sure to make it with the one and only Genuine Jell-O. fine. Listen, Mama, this is the last number of the 10th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. What? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? Mama says good night, folks. Oh. Melody Who from the production Sunny is written by Jerome Kern. Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O program through the courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company.